This video is about ions. You need to know what ions are and also be able to draw ions as well. Um, I would firstly recommend recapping your understanding of atomic structure and drawing atoms from the C1 topic. Um, you can go and find the videos on those. But I will give you a recap here to help with your understanding of ions as well. So remembering back to drawing atoms, if you had an atom of sodium, for example, in the periodic table, you would see Na for sodium, and that would have an atomic mass associated with it of 23 and an atomic or a proton number of 11. Now, the proton number tells us how many protons and electrons there are, protons and electrons. And it then allows us to draw the structure of the atom. So for a sodium atom, if we remember, the rule about electrons in electron shells is that you can have two on the inner shell and then up to eight on the outer shells. I'll just write that here because it's going to be important for us today. So two on the inner shell and then up to eight on outer shells. So that means all other shells can have up to eight electrons. So if we were to draw the atom of sodium, we would need to draw the electron structure with 11 electrons. So we'd start using these rules on the inner shell with two electrons, and we need to draw a further nine electrons. So we have one shell, where we can put up to eight and then we have a final shell with just one electron in and if you remember back from your understanding we can double check that we've drawn it right because sodium has one electron in its shell outer shell and therefore should be in group one of the periodic table because the number of electrons in the outer shell tells us what group it's in as well. Now today we need to look at how these atoms become ions. And to become an ion you need to gain or lose electrons. When you gain or lose electrons the atoms are essentially going to become like a noble gas. They, they're they trying to get a full outer shell of electrons to be like the noble gases which are in group zero which have a full outer shell. So sodium here could either gain seven electrons to have a full outer shell or it could lose one. And as it's easier for it to lose one, that's what it's going to do. So it'll always do the easiest thing. So sodium always loses this outer shell electron to become an ion. So if we were to draw it over here, we draw it with two in the middle, eight on the next shell, and we simply wouldn't draw the next outer shell because that has lost an electron. When it becomes an ion we have to draw these square brackets around to show that it's different from the atom. So ions always have these brackets around the outside. If you lose an electron you are losing a negative charge because if we remember from um, our understanding of atoms protons are positive plus one, electrons are negative, and neutrons have no charge. So if you lose a negative charge, you become positive. So we have to put a plus at the end of the ion to show that's become a positive ion. Now just to show this with the numbers to explain how that works, with sodium, as an atom, if we write out the proton, electron and neutron numbers, 
it has 11 protons, 11 electrons and 23 minus 11 makes 12 neutrons. But when it becomes an ion, it has lost an electron. So it has 11 protons still, because that doesn't change. This time it has 10 electrons, because it's lost one, and it has 12 neutrons. So if we look at that in terms of charge, it has 11 pluses over here and 11 pluses over here. 11 negative charges here, but only 10 negative charges here. And neutrons, of course, have no charge. So on this side, the number of positives is the same as the number of negatives, and that's why atoms have no overall charge. Whereas for the ion, you've got more positive charges than negative charges now. And in fact, you just have one more. Therefore, you are just a single plus ion. You don't have to write the one. It's a bit like algebra when you don't include the ones. So you just write the plus there. So that is how sodium would form an ion and it is a positive ion and in fact all metals become positive ions because they're always in the position whereby they will have few electrons in the outer shell therefore it is easier for it to lose electrons to have that full shell than it is to gain electrons. I want to do the example of magnesium. So magnesium. So magnesium as the atom would have 12 electrons with two in its outer shell, hence it's in group two. But when this forms an ion, it will lose its two outer shell electrons because it wants that full outer shell. So if it loses these two electrons, the next shell down would then be full, so it would have a complete outer shell. And it would become an ion. And again, we put the square brackets around that. And because it loses two electrons, it's losing two negative charges, so it becomes a two plus ion. Because now on this side, the number of protons it's got is still 12 from the proton number, but it has lost two electrons. So it used to have 12, but now it only has 10 electrons so that would make it a 2 plus ion because it's got 12 pluses, 10 minuses. So a plus and a minus would cancel out, leaving two pluses overall. So it would be a 2 plus ion. And again, that makes sense because metals, like we said, always become positive ions okay because they're on the left hand side of the period table they've only got a few electrons in its out in their outer shell therefore it is easier for them to lose electrons to achieve this stable outer shell as opposed to gaining lots more whereas something in group seven for example um we'll choose chlorine as our example As an atom, it has um, 17 electrons, so 7 in its outer shell, hence group 7, and as an ion, 
you might be able to see now that it would be easier for it to gain one electron to achieve a full outer shell than it would be to lose seven. So that's exactly what it does. When it becomes an ion, it gains an electron. Here and it again we need the square brackets around the outside because it's gained a negative charge through the electron it will become a minus ion or a negative ion oxygen is another example as an atom it has eight electrons so two in the inner shell six in the outer shell and when it becomes an ion hopefully you can see that it's easier for it to gain two electrons than it is to lose six so when it becomes an ion that's exactly what it does it gains two electrons becomes an ion and because it gains two negative charges overall its charge would be to minus. Now you need to be able to um, relate the charges on the ions to where they are in the periodic table. So if you always think that they're trying to get a full outer shell of 8, you can have a look here at the group numbers and see what it's easier for it to do, whether it's easier to gain an electron or lose an electron. So group 1 here that's got one electron in its outer shell so it's going to lose an electron and become a plus ion. Group 2, two electrons in its outer shell, it's going to lose two electrons and become a two plus ion. On the other side we need to concentrate on groups 6 and 7 so group 6, six electrons in its outer shell it needs two more for a complete shell of eight so it will gain two electrons and become a two minus ion and group seven with seven electrons in its outer shell it will gain one electron and become a minus ion now these ions here for the halogens have a special name because they are the halogens they are called halide ions. Pause the video and try and draw the ions for calcium and fluorine. So calcium is in group 2 of the periodic table so you should already be thinking that if it's in group 2 it's got two electrons in the outer shell and therefore it would need to lose two electrons to become an ion. And that's exactly what it does. So calcium as an atom has 20 electrons but because it's in group 2 it will lose 2 electrons. So now it only has 18 electrons, it has a full outer shell it doesn't have that extra energy level with the two electrons on because it's given those two electrons away and it is now an ion so you need the square brackets around it and because it's lo lost two electrons it has a charge of two plus hence it's in group two of the periodic table fluorine on the other hand is in group seven so it is a halogen and because it's in group 7 it needs to gain one electron for a full outer shell so as an atom it has nine electrons but it's going to gain an extra electron so two four six eight nine and then it gains an ele extra electron to have a full outer shell and because it's gained a negative charge, it becomes a minus ion.